Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Today I wanted to update you guys with the Righteous Fire Inquisitor, or Inquisitor again, uh, but more so in higher tier content. So today we're going to be showcasing a tier 16 map clear. Um, so first I'm going to go ahead and do the map, then I'll show you guys my gear right after. I've really been enjoying this character. The more and more currency I invest, naturally, the better it starts to feel. I will say we have done some major swaps this go around. Um, I have dropped Scorching Ray, mainly because of personal preference. Objectively, I do believe Scorching Ray does more damage than Flame Wall. However, Flame Wall makes it so we don't have to be stationary at all. This really helps on things like Awakener, um, where the target is constantly moving, or bosses with a lot of phases, or in just in general for things that just move around a lot. Uh, this really helps quite a bit. It also works well for rituals because essentially you open a ritual and then I'll just show you a prime example right here. You pop the ritual open and then you can just drop the flame walls down and since you can have three flame walls it works really really well. So definitely something that you guys could consider trying out. Again I don't know if I'm permanently going to stay like this. I do lose a bit of righteous fire damage because I lose the infusion. I lose a little bit of survivability because I lose the infusion, but it's, it, I mean, I gain survivability by not having to, uh, by not having to stand still. Uh, another thing to note is that the infusion normally would affect the Righteous Fire, right? Which, uh, we don't get anymore. And at the moment, I have zero, uh, exposure. So, what you're seeing is just purely Scorching, or sorry, not Scorching, but Flame Wall. Um, the ways I'd have to incorporate, exp oh my... The ways I'd have to incorporate exposure into the build would be fitting in a... I forgot what it's called, but there is a large cluster jewel, I think, with exposure. Uh, on top of a large cluster jewel with exposure. You could technically do like a... Like I could drop Culling Strike from my trigger weapon right now, if you look at it. We'll look at it after. And I could put in a Wave of Conviction. Wave of Conviction would override my EE, but then my Shield Charge or my Orb of Storms would immediately fix that and like re-override it with the correct element. The nice thing about Flame Wall is it's actually a lot more mono friendly than Scorching Ray, even though Scorching Ray did just get a, you know, essentially halved mana cost. Uh, well, a little bit more than halved mana cost, but then they like doubled the cast speed. Flame Wall costs almost nothing, so keeping up Inspiration with it is just as easy as keeping up Inspiration with Scorching Ray. Where's the boss? Oh, here he is. So you can see the damage is okay. You know, if, if we want to pump the damage up higher, it is going to be pretty expensive at this point, but that's what we're aiming for. It's not going to have the fastest map clear potential, but it does have really good survivability, and we'll go after the survivability after this. Just to show you guys that it can still like clear content, you know? Apologize if the game looks a bit laggy. We're uh, working on a new PC fund right now. Unfortunately, this 1080 Ti, no matter what I do, can never get to run Vulcan. Uh, and my, I mean, after deleting my shaders or my caches, yeah, the caches in, in the shader. I don't remember where exactly, but that fixed my load times quite a bit. I used to have like this really weird inconsistency load, where, like, how do I explain it? Nothing would load on my screen. It felt like I was playing Minecraft. What am I fighting? I'm just going to ball RF here. I saw a name in there. I didn't see what else. Okay.
That is our support we play with. You guys uh, are curious. He's a dedicated righteous fire support build. All right, that's pretty much the map clear. Let's take a look at what we have over here. 4K tribute, nothing very good. That might sell, but nah, I'll just take uh, Magmatic Strikes. That wouldn't work, that's Lightning Base. Well, this is Lightning Base, Magmatic's Fire. I'll just take some Splinters. Okay, and then I guess also real fast while we're at it, I do have this other invitation I can pop in to show you. Just some mass bossing, I guess. Still working on getting higher to the, uh, to the whatchamacallit. Grand game? Grand game? Oh, this is only a 78, never mind. Okay, one, I think that's two. You're number three, right? It's a nice drain you got there, ma'am. Cool. Hey, work. So we went full beyond. Uh, I kind of want to go Sacred Grove because it's sick, but it just takes so much time. If you don't have everything memorized for Harvest, I love it. It just takes so much time. Even when you play PoE like 10 hours a day, I feel like it's not enough for Harvest. Okay, so let's talk about like major additions I did to the build, right? So my weapon is still the exact same. Uh, this could have massive improvements for damage. Shield is exactly the same. Same thing. Well, this doesn't really get much damage, but yeah. Um, I did if, I did find this amulet, I, or talisman, I think I showed you guys this. This is actually pretty shit in our current gear right now. I would much rather have like a marble, a, I think a warlord, forgot whoever it is for plus one fire gems. Uh, a marble base is only like 0.4% life regen difference uh, from this, and it would not be corrupted. So getting like a plus one fire gems would be really sick here. Um, super, super, super sick. Because mainly... Uh, that plus one fire would give me a massive damage to the uh, RF and it would give me a massive damage to the Scorch, not Scorching Ray, Flame Wall. Because what I'm doing right now to hit 90 max fire res is if you look in my gloves, I only have a level normally 22 or 21 purity of fire. My weapon gives me plus one, so 21 to 22, and then I crafted plus one level of AoE gems, which gives me 23 purity of fire. Uh, and that gives me the breakpoint for 90 fire res, so I don't have to do, like, basically I'm, I'm like on a budget right now, even though the character's like 10 exalts, because I don't have plus one on my amulet. Anyway, moving across, we still have the soul tether. Um, I've got these boots I just purchased recently. Uh, I, I really, really need a ton of resistance. As you can see, my res is really bad right now, and I'll explain why shortly. Uh, I have to, I think... Uh, catalyst this ring for more res still using the exact same chest piece haven't done anything to it I'm still trying to farm the craft for the uh, maximum life added as energy shield and then the helmet if you guys didn't see I posted this on the community page on YouTube ended up crafting a sick helmet with essence of horror spamming the reason why I went for a pure armor base even though we use ES is because if you use pure armor you don't have to fight against mana as a prefix as you can tell we have like a prefix of life hybrid life and then uh, I crafted plus one to AoE gems. That plus one to AoE gems, I believe, hits the... Um, oh, it actually affects the Awakened Ink AoE. Nice. I believe that also um, hits the next breakpoint for RF for 23 for area scaling. Uh, also, I dropped efficacy to run Ink a or Awakened Ink AoE because I wanted to have a much larger Righteous Fire. Yeah, so when I uh, to recap, when I get plus one on my amulet here, then I can drop plus one here and craft physical taken as fire then I can drop uh, plus one here and craft most likely life regen or something else uh, and then that pretty much summarizes that to talk about the tree as to why we're so tanky right now I ended up fitting in a tempered by war this was the theory crafting we did uh, pre this league so it's a lethal pride and it makes it so that tempered by war is 50% less cold and less lightning resistance However, 50% of cold and lightning damage is taken as fire, and we're running at 90% fire res with 79 cold and 79 lightning. Um, this also affects degen sources, because it does not specifically say hits, 
So it, it is just a massive, massive survivability increase to the build. Now, what I was thinking is, since the way this jewel works, Lethal Pride, is it affects notables by it. Realistically, if I put the Lethal Pride over here, right, it could it will hit Quick Recovery, Arcanist Dominion, and even Firewalker if I go two points. But it eliminates this. So if you can get a Scepter with Elemental Equilibrium as it's implicit, then you can pretty much drop this whole bottom side pathing, and then you can... You don't even need EE. And then you get all these points back, which will most likely go into your uh, large, sorry, not large, your small uh, small life cluster for three points. And then your dual notables on like your mediums. So I don't, I have like brood for potency, but like realistically, uh, the other one, I forgot what it's called. There's something for life. The life and increased damage would be much better here. But yeah, that's pretty much just some min maxing. It, it, I don't know, it gets really tanky. I like it a lot. Then we ended up getting a Watcher's Eye here with 10% of physical damage from hits taken as fire while affected by Purity of Fire, which we naturally have on 100%. So as for where I'm going right now with the build, um, I'm pretty much just allocating the Chaos Res here because the only thing that really hurts me is like physical degen, massive physical hits, and Chaos damage. Uh, as you can see, we're at eight, or 55 Chaos with Flask on. We are capped at 79, but I want to get as much Chaos Resist as possible. Uh, ideally achieving that cap while still maintaining good damage. So yeah, that's pretty much the character. I also have nothing enchanted anywhere. Um, I would love to get a regen enchant on my boots. I would love to get either a reservation on my helmet so I could run arctic armor or even just something for righteous fire. You know, area or damage both work fine. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys have had a wonderful time with your RF characters. Some other things to think of is if I can ever drop like my setup in my boots where it's got like Urgent Orders, Infernal Cry, Enduring Cry, Second Wind, I'd love to do like Flame Dash, Arcane Surge somewhere, but at the moment that just doesn't, that just doesn't work. Um, and for people who are going to ask why do I not have my auras in my gloves because of the plus one AoE, I don't feel like spending 20 ball orbs to recolor my shield. Uh, it's not too big of a deal. It's only like an extra 15 life regen. Yep, but that's pretty much about it. So, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Pantheons, people have been asking. I use Soul of Lunaris because I'm always surrounded by mobs. Uh, I also play with a support, so uh, avoiding chain essentially means we can run a chain map mod. The chance to dodge attack and spell hits is great because we don't stack evasion, so we always get hit. Um, and then I've got Gruth Call because I'm always getting hit, so more physical damage reduction and then chance to slow them. Realistically though, you can get stunlocked with this build, so like Soul of Brine King is good. Haven't used Solaris yet. Uh, Arakali is not bad for starting out when you're like just leveling. Arakali is probably what you want to do. Arakali and uh, Aberath you probably want to do when starting out. And if you're having issues with chaos damage, you've got Shikari. Alright, that pretty much covers it though. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everybody.